Hi, my name is Paul Moyner and today I want to talk to you about how to improve production and quality in operations, particularly in mining. Uh, there are two main things that you want to improve in any kind of operational environment. The first one is production and the second one is quality. And normally when you come across an operation, uh, on one day they will run at this kind of production and quality, another day it will be down here, there, and all these days, all these different scenarios uh, are just, just show that the place isn't under control. If you draw a line around that, you can call that an operating envelope. And the problem is, for most operations, uh, that this makes it really, really difficult for the planners to estimate how much they're going to get out any particular day. And the customer of this organisation has no idea what quality they're going to get either. So it's really, really difficult for an operation to provide what it needs to its, to its uh, shareholders or to its customers uh, when it's working like this. So what David Upton said is that uh, to deal with this, the first thing you should do, the first thing you should do, because a lot of loss in this, is just to choose one of these places. It doesn't matter whether it's the fastest, the best quality, whatever. Just choose one and start to manage the operation effectively to that. So that means you've got to set procedures, you've got to have a plan, you've got to organise day-to-day -day work. And so if you do that, well then the average production goes up significantly and the average quality can go up significantly. And more importantly, the stability of the, of the operation significantly improves. So there's a lot that goes into that and a tool like Fusion and the CommitWorks tools help to produce the, the underlying um, process and planning and system to make that possible. However, you can go off and get a MOS project, MOS done by some consultancy if you like, but the basics, this is about getting the basics right. Once you've got the basics right, well then you can actually start to think about whether you go off to increase quality, go off and increase production by itself, or go off in some kind of average of the, of the two. Now, because you've got control, you can start to do experiments. You can start to turn the dial up. You can do a design of experiments exercise. You can do some lean and some Six Sigma and those kind of things to reduce waste. Once you've done that, you head off. But what's going to happen is you're going to, theory of constraints says, you're going to come across a constraint of some sort. There's always a constraint. So the question is, how do you break that constraint? So the first thing in, in um, Eli Goldratt's theory of constraints was to subjugate everything to the constraints. So similarly to here, where you've got to manage things effectively, if you're out here, you've also got to manage the process even more effectively to make sure the constraint is never starved. Once you've done that, you've eked out every little last ounce out of the, the current system, then you can ask yourself, should we invest some money in increasing the capacity and the constraint? And that means you get to break the constraint and go out to another level of performance. At some level, you get to a point where you've actually got to change the whole process. But I think what I've found in uh, my days of mining and, and, and operations in general is that a lot of the time, people get sold this idea of buying a new machine or buying a new process or increasing the size of the trucks or getting that kind of thing. And that's the work that takes you from here to there. That's breaking the constraint. But they do that often before they've actually uh, got control. And that's a mistake because really what you do, if you break that constraint and move it out to here, all you've done is increase your operating envelope. If you haven't got control, all you've done is increase your operating envelope. And that makes it harder for quality and worse for production for planning. So the process I would advocate for any operation that was thinking about trying to improve their performance, whether on production or quality, is to first get the basics right. Get, some, get a tool like Fusion in, start to put proper plans together in the hands of the supervisors, make sure people know what those plans are and continuously improve from day to day, and then start to explore the operating uh, potential until you hit a constraint, manage everything around that constraint and then uh, move from there on to the next, next stages. If you do that, you'll be able to deliver significant improvements in production and quality 
without spending huge amounts of money on new cattle equipment. Thanks.